A summary of the four facts. In summary, we have these proven facts. 1. Jesus' burial. 2. The discovery of his empty tomb. 3. His post-mortem appearances, when he appeared to people after his death. 4. The origin of the disciples' belief in his resurrection. So, the miraculous thing about the story of Jesus is not the evidence that he returned from death. It is that the best explanation for this evidence is that God performed a miracle. Introduction to Airmen Sometimes you will hear people say that there are differences in the stories about Jesus. The problem with using that as a reason to ignore them is that it assumes three things. First, it assumes that these differences cannot be resolved. The differences are primarily just in appearances. Second, it assumes that these differences are important parts of the message of the stories. The differences are almost all about unimportant details. Third, it assumes that all of the stories out there about Jesus have an equal claim to reliability by the standards of the scholar of history. Because there may be inconsistencies in a later and less reliable source does nothing to disprove or contradict the credibility of an earlier and more trustworthy source. In fact, when you look at the supposed differences, what you find is that almost all of them are like the names of the women or the number of the women who saw Jesus by the tomb. And these are merely appearances, not real. Moreover, the differences are in different circumstantial details of the story and have no effect on all of the four facts we have learned tonight. So most historians have not been convinced by these kinds of objections. Introduction to Airmen Continued Attempts to explain away these great facts, like the disciples stole the body, or Jesus wasn't really dead, all of these conspiracy theories have been universally rejected by contemporary scholarship. None of them have explained all of the facts and remained plausible. The simple fact is that there is no logical explanation of these facts if we limit ourselves to a naturalistic worldview. Therefore, it seems to me that the Christian is fully and completely justified in believing that Jesus rose from the dead, but that does entail that God exists. There are still some scholars who reject the resurrection based on an old idea from philosophy about miracles. Introduction to Airmen Continued For example, Bart Ehrman wrote, Because historians can only say what probably happened, and a miracle of this kind is very improbable, the historian cannot say it probably happened. This argument against academics calling something a miracle is an old one. It was first written by David Hume in his essay about miracles in The Historical Jesus. This idea has also already been refuted in the 18th century by eminent scholars like William Paley and George Campbell, and is rejected as fallacious by most contemporary philosophers as well. John Ehrman was professor of philosophy of science at the University of Pittsburgh. This professor Ehrman is not a Christian. He doesn't believe God exists at all. But all the same, he says this about Hume's argument. It's not merely a failure. It is an abject failure. That is to say, it is obviously wrong. Let me explain why. Historical Probability Statistics Regarding Biblical Authenticity when we talk about the probability of some event or hypothesis 
A, that probability is always relative to a body of background information called B. The probability of A on B is the probability of start bracket A divided by B end bracket. So we talk about the probability of A on B, or in other words, we talk about the probability of A with respect to B. Continuing historical probability statistics regarding biblical authenticity. So, in order to figure out the probability of the resurrection, we will say stand for equals, let us agree that this symbol represents this concept. So, let B stand for our background knowledge of the world apart from any evidence for the resurrection. Let E stand for the specific evidence for Jesus' resurrection, the four great facts. Let R stand for the resurrection of Jesus. That gives us the equation. Probability, start bracket, R over B plus E, end bracket, equals... Continuing historical probability statistics regarding biblical authenticity. Now, what we want to figure out is the probability that Jesus returned from death given our background knowledge of the world and the specific evidence in this case. Now, probability theorists have developed a very complicated equation for calculating probabilities like this, and I'm going to walk you through it one step at a time. Probability, or PR, start bracket R over B plus E, end bracket equals... The first factor that we need to consider is the probability of the resurrection on the background knowledge alone. PR, start bracket, R, over B, end bracket. This is called the intrinsic probability. The intrinsic probability of the resurrection is the probability of the resurrection based on our general knowledge of the world, or... PR, start bracket, R over B plus E, end bracket, equals PR, start bracket, R over B, end bracket. Continuing historical probability statistics regarding biblical authenticity. Next, we multiply that by the probability of the evidence based on our general knowledge and the resurrection, or PR, start bracket, R over B plus E, end bracket, equals PR, start bracket, R over B, end bracket, times PR, start bracket, E over B plus R, end bracket. This is called the explanatory power of the resurrection hypothesis or theory. It tells us how probable the resurrection theory makes the evidence, or the four great facts. Now these two factors make the numerator of this ratio. The intrinsic probability of the resurrection hypothesis and the explanatory power of the resurrection hypothesis, or PR start bracket R over B plus E end bracket equals PR start bracket R over B end bracket times PR start bracket E over B plus R end bracket. Continuing historical probability statistics regarding biblical authenticity. Now, below the line, we just reproduce the numerator. We just move everything above the line, down below the line. So, 
PR star bracket R over B plus E end bracket equals PR start bracket R over B end bracket times PR start bracket E over B plus R end bracket over PR start bracket R over B end bracket times PR start bracket E over B plus R end bracket. Finally, we add to that the product of two more factors, which gives us PR start bracket R over B plus E end bracket equals PR start bracket R over B end bracket times PR start bracket E over B plus R end bracket over PR start bracket R over B end bracket times PR start bracket E over B plus R end bracket bracket PR start bracket not R over B end bracket times start bracket E over B plus not R end bracket bracket. The first of these two factors is the intrinsic probability that Jesus did not rise from the dead, multiplied by the explanatory power of the hypothesis of no resurrection. And basically, this is the intrinsic probability and explanatory power of all the naturalistic explanations of the resurrections of Jesus. So, the probability of Jesus' resurrection relative to our general information and the specific evidence is equal to this complicated ratio. PR start bracket R over B plus E end bracket equals PR start bracket R over B end bracket times PR start bracket E over B plus R end bracket over PR start bracket R over B end bracket times PR start bracket E over B plus R end bracket bracket PR start bracket not R over B end bracket times start bracket E over B plus not R end bracket bracket.